Number star, troubleshooting. Troubleshooting. Well, I skipped a bunch then. So, troubleshooting. So, we just talked about this a bit ago. Remember that alternator output, that alternator output, output is two volts or more above the battery voltage. So if the alternator output seems to be the same as the battery voltage, you've got an alternator problem. So, so if alternator voltage seems to match battery voltage. Well, now I gotta be careful because if it's running, it will match the battery voltage, right? Because if you have a working alternator, then, and you're running it, and you go out and you measure battery voltage, what are you actually measuring? Alternator, alternator output. So, but what I mean here is if you check the battery, then start the alternator, and it seems to be the same, then you probably have an alternator problem. If the alternator voltage seems to match the battery voltage, oops, went off, we can say that. Went open or off. Maybe that makes sense. Well, verbally it did. Um, then alternator is a problem. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to write this one and probably wish I wouldn't at some time. Just like with a generator. With a generator. You can put battery voltage. Battery voltage into the field field um, to see if the problem or the issue is alternator or regulator but I'll be real careful about that one so I was having a real problem with uh, the system on my boat, I have an older boat. And it's kind of weird because the, the instrumentation runs off six volts, but the engine runs off 12, so it's like, whatever. And it seemed like the alternator was working, you know? It, it just, all the indications were it was, but every time I would go out and it would, you know, the boat wouldn't want to, it would start up fine, and we'd go out and start using it, then it wouldn't want to work. And it's like, well, why did it start at the dock and not out here in the, on, uh, you know, out when we're out on the river, and it was just driving me nuts. And finally, I said, Well, to heck with it, I'll just take it in and have it overhauled. Now, of course, you have to have a boat alternator overhauled because you can't run down to the parts store and pick up a boat alternator because they're spark proof because boats get fumes down in the belly, and then if you have sparks, it blows up the boat. So I, so I took it to this place. I remember, I, Hey, can you test my alternator? Yeah, yeah, sure, man. It's like one of our alternator testers. And he puts it up on there, and he's kind of looking around. And he gets some wire and do this and do that and turns it on. And he hits something, sparks just shoot all over the place. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad now. <laughs> yes, I agree with you now. The question still remains, was it bad before I handed it to you? So, <laughs> Yep, he, uh, he overhauled it. <laughs> And then I put a new battery in. So I don't know which one it was. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. <laughs> Differences between automotive and aviation. So I pulled this out of a book somewhere. 
And I'm going to tell you what they said. I don't necessarily agree at all. But this is what the book said. Aircraft alternators turn in the opposite direction. So that means if you happen to have a Skymaster, not a Skymaster, a Piper, like a Piper Seneca, some of the Piper Senecas had a right hand engine, a left hand engine. There's some twins that have a left hand, not many of them. That would, if this is true, that means that that left hand turning engine can't have an alternator because it turns the opposite direction. And if aircraft alternators all turn the opposite direction, then one of the other ones can't work. So, yeah, and they put it, they have to put it on backwards. Yes, they, but it's gear driven. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, the whole engine is, well, it is already. So that's what they said. Um, because they say the cooling fans are reversed. Again, I don't really buy that so much because Lycoming uses front mount alternators that get ram air coming into them. So you definitely want to go from the front to the back. Um, my alternator is backwards on my airplane with the pulley right next to the firewall. So I'm not even sure which way the cooling goes on that one. It's just kind of there because air kind of doesn't, it's kind of steel back there. Um, yeah, there's all different kinds of ways to put them on. So I don't know. Um, they also said this, they are wound in the opposite direction. I don't think any of this is true. Um, this one possibly, radio suppression is different. You have to worry about noise from the alternator. So because of the sensitivity of the radios in the aircraft, they probably have better suppression diodes, uh, capacitors, and and the like. Make sure that it's grounded and bonded better. So I think that is possible. Um, this is possible here. Some components are heavy duty. Don't know if that's true or not. Um, so, and as example, they said uh, bolts and diodes, bolts and diodes. Um, and they also mentioned that the shorter drive shaft, shorter drive shaft, and different thread size. That I believe because most cars are metric and aircraft, most aircraft are not. Some are now. But if I go back and look at this alternator right there, well, that sure looks like the same size shaft as any other thing that I've seen for every other car. It's even running a serpentine belt, which tells me this is a pretty new engine. So I kind of tend to doubt most of everything they just said right there. But I threw it out there just for case and I wrote it on a test or something. Um, uh, Kevin, yeah. Really stupid question. Uh, you said most are imperial sizes. Uh, most aircraft are imperial sizes. So no, I didn't say all, but a lot, most of them are, yes. I don't the, believe uh, Airbus is. I was going to say, is Air, Airbus isn't? Airbus isn't okay. most. So let's say Boeing. I don't think so. Not the ones I've worked on. All Cessna, Piper, everything. Um, you'd have to get into some of the new one, Pipistrol, or um, I don't know what's that other stupid one they have over at Executive. The Remos. Remos. Pipistrol, Remos, they're going to be metric. Um, yeah, I think Airbus is because they come from Europe. Um, and Cirrus? I think Cirrus might be. Huh? It doesn't matter. It's still, I think, I think it might be. I don't remember. But most other airplanes are. So I don't count Airbuses. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 
We'll throw this one out here since we, we can. All right, next. Okay. This would be my point fourteen. Probably isn't on you, but <laughs> all right. Now you can see how much stuff I. All right, AC generators. Very short part here because you're really going to cover AC generators more in second year. We'll get into this a little bit more. So with the uh, constant speed drives and such. So large aircraft. Large aircraft that use AC power, that use AC power, employ an AC generator. Could even be a starter generator. Um, and AC generator is very similar, is very similar in operation to uh, DC alternator, but without the diodes. To be brief. Um, is that still self-deciding or does that run off the battery? Battery. AC, alt DC alternator. Oh, yeah. Uh, an AC generator must be turned, must be turned at an exact RPM, RPM to produce the correct frequency. That's the need for a constant speed drive, which is a second year topic. Most uh, aircraft are 400 hertz. Um, this is done with a constant speed drive or a CSD a CSD uh, let's see interesting that I found this one the Boeing 787 uses variable frequency drive uses variable frequency from 360 to 800 hertz. And we are now getting into this note. Um, newer brushless technology. Brushless technology. Also, um, now let's go brushless technology is being used. There's also these companies making new lightweight things, lightweight starters, lightweight generators. Lightweight starters are kind of a big deal. They use permanent magnets, but it's more of a motor thing. Are the constant speed drives, are those like a separate unit that they have to it's a bolt-on item, bolts on the accessory case, and then it takes whatever RPM that the engine is giving and puts an output at the exact correct RPM at all times. They're really ingenious how they work. How big is it? I want to say like a Boeing 747. It's like not that big. Wow. I wouldn't even know how those work. 
Well, you're going to find out. Yes, we will. He uses a turbo and cabulator. <laughs> the spur gear where it normally is. <laughs> Got a dongle spring. <laughs> All right, you caught up? Okay. Let's talk about motors now. Motors. This is one of the things that I have found, in, at least in my career, is I've been able to take apart, overhaul, diagnose, and work with generators, do the same thing with alternators. When it comes to motors, just take it apart. Put a new one on. Or don't take it. Take it off, put a new one on. Don't mess with motors too much. Um, probably because there's not a lot of backups to motors, if you think where, where motors go in an airplane. Landing gear motor, I don't want to be responsible for that. Um, starter motors, just replace them. Um, flat motors, <coughs> same thing. Yeah. But you have to understand at least the nuances of motors and kind of understand how they work so that you can properly diagnose it so that you're not somebody who just kind of goes, oh, replace the motor. Well, wait a minute, why, why, why the motor? Why couldn't it be this or that? Or what do you expect to see? So by knowing motors, you know what to expect to see. Like, you know, for example, you know better if somebody's, you know, looking at amperage, you go, whoa, dang, there's a problem. Every time we start it up, it like draws like way more amps than it should. And then it kind of comes down. So, well, I guess we got some bad brushes. You're like, wait a minute. No, it's supposed to do that. That's how they work, you know. But you'll find people like that out there. Like, so you'll know better. So. What is a motor? Well, what was a generator? An item that turns mechanical energy into electrical energy. So a motor would be an item that changes electrical energy into mechanical energy. So an item that changes electrical energy. to mechanical energy, energy, there we go, uh, let's see, there are many types of motors, boy there really are, many types of motors, but they can all be classified into two groups. All right, group one, DC. So DC motors, they are series wound. Care to guess the next one? Nope, no such thing. Shunt wound. C. No. Compound. Compound. Man, I'm on this. <laughs> you have the right idea, just the wrong <laughs> vernacular. All right. We have AC motors. Um, well, I should have put classified as is what I meant to put there. Classified. Classified as, there we go. Classified as, or by, actually, I want the word by there. By, first one is? Horsepower. <laughs> Next one is? Phase. And then, 
Frequency. Frequency. So horsepower, we know what that is, right? 746 watts. Phase, single phase, polyphase, single phase or three phase. And the frequency, you know what the frequency is. All right. So all motors may include include, I don't know, I can't wait to see. Here we go. My favorite word. Duty cycle. You said duty. <laughs> All right, what is duty cycle? How long you can operate it. Before it takes a crap? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come full circle. Yes, how long, you, how long you can use before it takes a crap. Well, that's kind of what it is. So a duty cycle is how often you can use it like per minute, but it, then it must rest. So you may look in the pilot's operating handbook and it says, do not extend and retract the gear more than once per every three minutes or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's just, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we, we put a self-imposed duty cycle on there. Um, I was trying to think what else we have. Uh, yeah, landing gear motors will often have that. Starter. Uh, do, that's what I was thinking. Definitely starters. Do you remember what it was on that one? Like 15 to 30 seconds. Minutes, like yeah, 30, yeah, something like 30, 30 seconds for every five minutes on the starter that we have here um, because it's one of those newer lightweight starters and they don't dissipate heat real well. So you have to be very aware of the duty cycle of what you're doing there. Uh, where you run into that problem, yeah, trying to start an engine that won't start, just crank, 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 and then it's like, oh, well, now I need a new starter. <laughs> You're doing gear tests on an aircraft because every annual inspection, when you have a retractable aircraft, you're going to bring it in, put it up on stands. You're going to run the gear up and out a bunch of times. If it's electric gear, doing a you know up down, check this side up down, check that side up down, check the nose gear. Then you'll see the duty cycle. Then you have a problem with it. And you're like you're doing it some more. And it's like before you know it, you're buying a new motor. So uh, they may include the horsepower rating. And as we've learned that uh, horsepower rating is definitely the output. And then they have the volts and amps on it. Volts, amps, so you know, AMPS, so you know what to connect it to. Is it a 12 volt system, 24 volt system, how many amps it's gonna draw. Um, it may have something about the RPM on it. What is the proper operating RPM? So they're just things you find on the data tag of it. Like those little motors you guys worked with uh, you know, last week, seems like time went by fast. It had right on the plate how many? Didn't it say right on there how many amps it was? Uh, yeah. It was eight. in a ten, eight, eight amp. Yeah. So, all right. Theory. The theory, and it's really it's fitting that this works in with generators because. It just, it kind of matches what a generator is. It just works a little bit different. In fact, we already know that a generator, and I've shown, shown you guys that are running your generators, I'll, I'll hit the reverse current cut out and let your generator run. You see, see, generator's now a motor. Very weak one, but it is. So, so the basic theory, the basic theory is attraction and repulsion. and repulsion. So basically what we're going to do inside of this case is we're going to make two magnets. One magnet is, think of it as the field coils, and the other magnet is the armature. And you're going to create a north in the field magnet, you're going to create a north in the armature so that the two hate each other and want to turn. But the problem of course is you make a north here to north here and over here is a south and it rotates it out and then the south comes around and locks in and well that's you done so it's real easy to make a half rotation motor it's harder to make it keep going uh, let's see if a magnet if, yeah, we got that. if a magnet is placed in a field that opposes the magnet the magnet will rotate i need to write that yeah as you can see yes, yes write it yes, all right <laughs> magnet is placed into a field, into a field. 
that opposes the magnet the magnet will rotate magnet will rotate Here we are, motors. Actually, I think that belongs in the motors. I forget what that was. All right, talking about motors. My next point would be the right-hand motor rule. See, that's why I don't ask you about these things, as long as you understand <laughs> it. But it's the same thing as the left, but now it's just the right. It's the motion, magnetic flux, current. So you're actually lining up the magnetic flux and the current, and it's going to tell you which way the motor is going to go. So it's the same theory. Let me see. Now, this look familiar? It is, but now it's motors. So it's the same thing. So we have a loop of wire going through and we have current going through a certain way. It is going to create, if you use the right hand rule of thumb then, this time you're going north to south and which way the current's flowing, you're gonna find out that it's gonna go and rotate, well this one's gonna rotate around this way, rotate around. And so we will no, direction of, that's right, I was right. So this way, torque is going this way, so you're gonna find out it's gonna go up and over and around. Now, just like before, though, as I was saying, that this goes up, over, and around, we can assume that this uh, loop down here that's down at the bottom is going to be attracted over to the north, and when it get, if it's a south and it gets here, it's going to lock in. So you can't have that, so it's got to keep changing. So how can we keep changing the polarity of these poles? A commutator. A commutator segment. <laughs> So when you look at a generator, it's really kind of, it's kind of hard to tell. Is this a commutator or is it a generator or a motor? They look very, very similar. There we go. Commutator segments, how it works. Make this bigger. All right, so we've got, yeah, I think it's, the pointer that you guys can't see what I'm talking about on online. I don't know if it's the laser pointer. Is it the laser pointer? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Okay, so if I keep it a pen, maybe you can see it? No, I think you can see the mouse. See the mouse? All right. I don't even know what to do with that now. Anyway, okay. So here we go. So I missed that. What? Huh? What other options do we have? I don't know. Uh, for, it's a, for online. Okay, problem is you can't see it in class though, and that's where you're at. All right, so we've got a motor right here. We've got our commutator segments down here. You can see the brushes, these are all familiar with you. Now we have a battery down here. Battery is putting negative on this side, positive on this side. So it goes through a coil right here and it creates electromagnet inside of the armature. We have the field poles here, if you will. This will be the south, that's north. Obviously the north is gonna be attracted to the south. The south will be attracted to the north and once it got there, bam, it's gonna lock in. Except we're gonna switch commutator segments and reverse it. So right here is where it's gonna reverse. So it, just, it has to coast on its own through that plane right there. But as soon as it crosses over, then we switch the magnets. So this is south, that's north. In a minute, this is gonna be south and that's gonna be north. And that's how it's just gonna keep going and going and going. What's next? No one knows what that means. All right. <laughs> All right, so we got the theory. We have the right hand rule of thumb. Right hand, I'll call it the right hand motor rule. The right hand motor rule. But I'm not going to write it all out. All right. Um, 
So as uh, as the magnet moves, it will eventually stop as unlike forces meet. As the magnet or in this case armature or the rotor moves. it would eventually stop as unlike forces meet. As unlike forces meet. But a commutator is used to reverse the field polarity and keep motor spinning. A commutator is used to change polarity and keep motor spinning. Now I gotta move. Can I move? C. Am I on C? Okay. Oh man, I used up paper again. Jeez. Damn, I read a lot. That was two tonight. Um, there, uh, the more poles there are, so that was V I. The more poles there are, there are, comma, the smoother the motor. All right, this will be seventeen. Counter, counter and net EMF. What does EMF stand for? Which is like voltage, current, or resistance. Resistance. Voltage. Voltage. All right. Sticking counter. Oh, okay, I can see that. So remember, when I say that, it means I've already covered it, that as a conductor moves through a field, that as a conductor moves through a field, field, the conductor moves through a field, counter EMF, Counter EMF is produced, is produced that opposes the applied EMF. That opposes the applied EMF. Remember that? Yes. So when we have a coil, we have current comes flowing into the coil. As it flows into the coil, it opposes that, or we could say as the conductor moves through a field. Um, so what did we have? We talked about that with generators. As the armature rotates through the field, it creates its own electrical energy or its own magnetic field um, that produces uh, counter EMF to all of that. So, uh, so a motor, a motor, must therefore operate operate on the net EMF which is to say applied EMF minus the counter EMF equals net EMF. 
And I guess the important point to this is not so much that, but where I'm going with it, and that is this point here, that motors are made with very low resistance. Motors are made with very low resistance. Very low resistance. Well, I actually wrote, I'll, I'll write it out. Very low armature resistance, very low armature resistance, resistance for this reason. Because if we started adding a bunch of resistance to it, we're not going to get much net EMF because then it would be applied EMF minus counter EMF minus resistance would then equal net EMF. And I don't want that. Bad enough that we got to lose out of our counter EMF, which, you know, it'd be nice if we had applied EMF equaled net EMF, but it's not. So we're already going to lose some power in there. So I will let's see, this is uh, a. So 17 A, B, I, oh, this would be C, okay, I'll catch up, C, during startup, there is no CMF, during, during startup, startup, there is no counter EMF. which is to say there's no resistance at all to the power coming in. It sees it as just an, not an open, but practically a dead short, just a wire running straight through. So it's very happy about that. So if we have a battery and we connect it to just a piece of wire, you're going to get a lot of battery current flowing right through that wire because there's no opposition to it. You'd even have that with your little tiny projects with your six volt battery. If you just took your leads and hooked one positive to negative, what happens to that lead? Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I, in all fairness, he had resistors. Just not enough, right? Yeah? yeah. If I remember, we had a little bit of smoke. It was cool. Put the magic smoke out. <laughs> it's okay. They're his wires. I wouldn't. So, or was it, it was a resistor that kind of smoked, huh? Yeah. It was something though, but anyway, so you get a lot of current, which is good. It's a good learning opportunity. So you got a lot of current going flowing there. So really, motor's no different. So you cook up the battery, and you're going to get a lot of current flow through it, quite a bit. All of it. And I guess it's almost time to go. So I better make a point here. Um, <laughs> that means that at startup, the current draw, the current. The current draw at startup, at startup, is significantly higher S I G significantly, yes, I see, I mean, got it, higher, <laughs> higher than when motor is running. All right, that's a good place to stop.